Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Um, I'm a little, sorry we're starting late. Uh, just blame the Sunday school teacher this morning. <laughs> so you could probably guess who that was. Um, but again, welcome to St. Mark's. I, I have just a c- couple announcements. Um, not too many. Just um, again, we're continuing to. Uh, collect for hygiene kits, which will go to Church World Services. There's lists of items uh, that we're looking for if you're able to help uh, in the social room. So we have that going on. Um, and I guess that's a- about it for the next couple weeks anyway. And in the month of August, um, we'll have a, a one Sunday, August 15th, we'll have a blessing for students, teachers, and backpacks. So um, if you're able to be in church that day, we'll have a special blessing, and we of course have the Wolfsville picnic uh, next week, uh, next month, uh, to look forward to. So I think those are all the church announcements I have. If I, yes, Nelson. Okay, thank you. So as Nelson Michael said, especially for those watching at home, we have the permits for the picnic, so we are legal. And um, if, if we appreciate all our volunteers. And if you did volunteer in the past and you can't this year, just to let us know, and we'll, we'll make sure things come together. So, um, so thank you for that. So we're look, looking forward to it. I'm, it'll be my first Wolfsville picnic, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And this past week, I had my wo- first Wolfsville vacation Bible school. So, so that was a lot of fun, too. So I've been having, because of COVID, i am now been here over a year, but I'm, I'm having some firsts. <laughs> so, but that, that's okay. So I think those are all my church announcements. So I can make a little personal announcement. We have, I have some, uh, we have some guests with us. Um, sitting with my wife and kids are my mother and father-in-law, uh, Doug and Jane Barry. So we're glad that um, they're able to be with us. And they've been um, visiting with us, um, which I, I don't know how much they enjoy. We enjoy because we put them to work. So they've been doing a lot of stuff at our house um, with us. So they're probably tired. Um, so, but anyway, we're, we're glad that they're worshiping with us today. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay, well then we prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude.
I invite the congregation to please rise. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you, oh, th we give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading today is taken from Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have, who has, excuse me, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended th to them. So why will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord? Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise 
rise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will rise up for, a da for David, a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness to the land. In his days, Judea will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And thus is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways of your namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> Sorry, I had friends that one in a while. Second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 11 through 22. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcised by those who are called the circumcised. A physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at the time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were from off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace in his flesh, and he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for the, through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The Lord of the, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to please rise. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. 
When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gesenaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's message. Yeah, there we go. Good job. Okay, good morning. Well, today we're going to talk about leadership and, and what makes a good leader. So let me first ask you, do you know any leaders when you think of, when you hear that word leader? Who are some leaders that might come to your mind? Um, Alexander. God. God. That's very good. So you're kind of ahead of me, but that's good. <laughs> that's very good. Samuel. A principal. So a leader of a school is called a principal, right? Uh, Grayson. Jesus. Jesus. Excellent. Excellent. Joel. A captain. a captain. Yep. So a captain's usually have a boat, right? A ship. Very good. Uh, Alexander. A mayor. a mayor. Very good. Samuel. A government. Well, the government. Yep. And a mayor is part of the government. Who else is part of the government? A president. President. Good job. All right. What's that? Mary, you mean the mother of Jesus? Yes, yeah, she's very important. Yep, and she helped, uh, helped Jesus grow up. She was um, a leader in his life in many ways. Yep. A counselor? A counselor. Okay, very good. So you knew a lot of leaders. You knew more than I, I, I wasn't expecting so many good answers. So that's great. Um, so I, I thought I'd have to help you along more. A couple other examples I thought of was... Um, uh, some of you are in extracurriculars, and I know my kids are in Cub Scouts, and they have a leader called a Cub Master. I don't know if any of you are in sports. Yeah. Is the coach kind of the leader of the team in a way? Kind of, but then I'm the same time as the captain's also the leader. Okay, so you have a coach and a captain. Okay, so you have leaders in a sports team as well. So a lot of leaders. Now let me ask you, um, what do you think makes a good leader? What type of quality should a leader have? What kind of person should they be? Uh, a leader is a person who brings you up. Brings you up? So they, they're, they help you? They want to teach you, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yep, good. Take See? Care of you. Take care of you. Yep, teach you, take care of you, bring you up. Um, so that's all very good. So. Um, a couple other things I thought of: a leader should be a leader. Whoop, a leader should be honest, uh, honest, trustworthy, um, and they should be able to make tough decisions. But the what I really wanted to get to, which um, uh, two of you got right away, was that they should be someone who's kind, someone who's nice to people, who wants to take care of people, who wants to kind of build you up. And that's right. Now, the Bible, when they talk, the Bible, when, it, when the Bible talks about leaders, the Bible will also, often, not always, but often call a leader a shepherd. You know what a shepherd normally is, right? Shepherd takes care of what kind of animal? Sheep. Very good. But the Bible often uses the word shepherd to describe a leader. And the reason God calls leaders shepherds is so that leaders would remember that they're always to take good care of the people they're leading. So leaders should always take good care of the people that they're leading. So there, we already told us lots of leaders in our world. Now, it was already said a couple times, but who's the greatest leader in the world? Who's the leader of us all? God. God. Very good. Very good. God. Or we could also say Jesus. E either way, either way. But Jesus, Jesus is often called the good shepherd. 
Okay, we often sometimes call him our Lord or our King, but Jesus is our leader. And um, one of the reasons he's called the Good Shepherd is because Jesus loves who? Who does Jesus love? All of us. All of us. Excellent. Good job. Jesus loves all of us, and he, and he wants to take care of us. And we saw that that Bible lesson I read was really neat. It talked about a time when the, Jesus had sent the 12 disciples on a mission. They come back to Jesus, and they're really tired. They're hungry, so Jesus wants to take them to a quiet place to get away. And people find Jesus. They come to see him, and you think Jesus turns them away? No. Instead, we're told that Jesus looked at them. He had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things and heal their sick. So Jesus, even though him and the disciples had, were real busy and wanted a break, he sees these people and he teaches them and he heals them. He spends time with them. He loves them. So that's one of the reasons Jesus is such a great leader, because he loves each and every one of us, and he cares for us. So again, a good leader should be honest and caring, and the one person who's always honest and caring is who? God, God or Jesus. Excellent. Okay, well, that, that's, that's all I have. Will you please pray with me? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, throughout history, you have called many different men and women to be leaders in our world. We ask that your spirit would guide the leaders of the world, that they would remember to look to you as their shepherd and example. Amen. All right, thanks for coming forward. And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our Lord, our, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Leadership is very important in our world. One of the most contentious issues in our nation is who should serve as our elected leaders, especially when a leader or group of leaders are responsible for making decisions that directly affect us. I lived most of my life in Pennsylvania, and the government in Pennsylvania is a little different than in Maryland, but in both of the counties I lived in. So I grew up in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, and, I, and then my last parish was in Monroe County. And in both, uh, in both counties, property taxes is a big issue. If you go, if you live there, that's one of the issues people talk about. And every couple of years, one of the most uh, heated elections is for school board. And again, it it's, it's mostly centers on the issue of property taxes. Some years, there's other school-related issues that people are concerned about. But property taxes are often one of the, one of the big issues. So that election is, is always closely watched and debated. And the government is not the only area where we care about our leadership. Every time a Lutheran church votes on a new pastor, that particular Sunday is one of the best attended services of the year. It's like Christmas Eve or Easter. Everybody comes out. Now, I do want to remind everyone that in the Lutheran Church, the pastor has very little authority. But to borrow a term from the business world, the pastor, in a sense, is the face of the company. And the pastor is called to be the leading theologian in the church. So the pastor is important. It makes sense that people come out when they're voting on a new pastor. But most of the decision-making in the church is held by the congregation, especially the council. Well, again, leadership is important to us as human beings, especially if we know that their actions will affect us. I will say that there are leaders in our nation, in our communities, and in the business world that most people do not pay attention to, 
but their actions do affect us in one way or another. So again, it's crucial that we pay attention to the people who are in charge. And not only are leaders important to human beings, but they're also important to God. In our scripture lessons, we are taught that God is our most important leader. Jesus is our true king or Lord. We are also taught that human leadership is still, and we are also taught today that, our, that human leadership is still important in our world and to God. Unfortunately, as we all know, some, some human, well, fortunately, some, some human leadership is good, and unfortunately, other human leadership is not good, and sometimes they can even embrace evil. In our first lesson, we find some not-so-good human leaders. In, our, in most of our lessons, we find God calling leaders shepherds, which is a reminder that leaders are entrusted with caring for the people they are in charge of. They're to care for them. Well, many of the kings of Israel and Judah have not, had not been faithful. They would often put their own ambitions ahead of the will of God and before God's people. They would sometimes make deals with foreign governments and sometimes start to even worship the gods of these other nations. They did not make sure that everyone was treated fairly under the law, and the needs of many were often ignored. Instead of being shepherds who look to God as their shepherd and the shepherd of everyone, they instead allowed their desires of having and maintaining power control their actions. So that's what they become consumed with. They want to maintain their power instead of looking to God as the leader and shepherd of themselves and of everyone. Well, God has harsh, harsh words for these shepherds. The Lord says, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. God goes on to say, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings. And the power that these shepherds were so determined to hold on to was then lost. There is good news in this reading. God then says, then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This promise in Jeremiah is fulfilled in our gospel lesson for today. In our gospel lesson, we see that a remnant of the people of Judah and Israel have returned from the land. They're back living in the land that they were, that they were driven out of because of the sins of their shepherd, shepherds. We are told that this, rem, this remnant, this remnant recognized a good shepherd, and they hurried on foot from all the towns to meet him. And this good shepherd saw this crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. This good shepherd was from the line of David. He came to reign as a king and deal wisely. This good shepherd not only came for the remnant of Israel, but as St. Paul says in our second lesson, he also came for those who are aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. 
or to put it simply, for the Gentiles as well. We know that Jesus is a good shepherd because he brings a message of peace and he broke, he broke down the dividing wall between Jew and Gentile. St. Paul says he has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he, became, so he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. With Jesus, we have a shepherd who is all about bringing people together. Who does, we have a shepherd who does not want people to feel divided or separate from one another but who instead wants people to look at each other as children of God. Each person, each person in our world is just as much loved by God as the next. The Good Shepherd works to bring peace to the world by helping us to understand the love of God and that God expects us to share that love in our world. The Good Shepherd brings peace to the world by informing us that through his actions on the cross, we may know forgiveness of sins, and we can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus is truly our Good Shepherd, our Lead Shepherd, our Lord, our King. But Jesus has also instituted human leadership for our world. Our gospel lesson begins with the 12 disciples returning to Jesus after they were sent out on a missionary journey. These 12 disciples will eventually be commissioned by Jesus to become shepherds. And unlike the shepherds from our first lesson, these 12 men will be good shepherds, not perfect shepherds but good shepherds. And they will be good shepherds for a few reasons. And one reason is because they learn to live by the words of Psalm 23. The 12 disciples know that Jesus is their true shepherd and they know that they can rely on God to provide for their needs. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. That statement does not mean that God will provide for our, for our every want, but that God will provide for our needs. This psalm continues to stress that God will continue, for, that God will continue to provide for our needs by saying, the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. The psalm also says, You restore my soul, O Lord, and you guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. The twelve disciples knew that it was only Jesus who restores our soul through his death on the cross. And it is the Holy Spirit who guides us along right pathways. The twelve disciples also know that even though they are God's shepherds, that life will not always be easy for them. However, they are also strong enough in their faith that they know that God will never lead them somewhere that God is not willing to go with them. Psalm 23 states, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Throughout each challenge that the disciples faced, they knew that God was with them. And they knew that a better future awaits them. 
Psalm 23 states, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The twelve disciples were shepherds who, not, who were not only working for a better life here on earth by helping people to know the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, but they also knew that they were helping people to know a perfect future. And because the 12 disciples lived according to the teachings of Psalm 23, they were able to be good shepherds. And their teachings and examples, their example lives on today. Leadership continues to be important in our world. There are no perfect human leaders. And that's important to remember. All human beings are sinners. And on top of that, we all just make mistakes. We may be trying to make a good decision, and it might turn out to be not so good. So a lot of people might be well-intentioned, but again, they, they still make mistakes. So it's important to remember, no human, leader, no human leader is perfect. But at the same time, there are some really corrupt and bad shepherds in our world. And those shepherds need to be called out for hurting those in their care. Thankfully, there continue to be good shepherds in our world. As St. Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we should pray for our leaders. We should remember that they are not without sin. And even when they mean well, they will make the occasional mistake. But the success of any leader, of any shepherd, lies in remembering that Jesus is the good shepherd of us all. That as Psalm 23 says, we can trust in him, and he will always be with us, even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Unfortunately, none of us will reach perfection while we are on this earth. But if we keep Jesus as our shepherd, we will be able to help God's perfect love be known in our world. And we can look forward to dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
I invite the congregation to please rise. <clears throat> and with the whole church, we confess our faith using the words from the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Tenure church, O God, encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. <clears throat> Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O God. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. Hear us, O God. <clears throat> Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Hear, heal your people, give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovering, recovery to those who are ill. And we especially lift before you those who are named to this, those who are known to this congregation in need of your healing presence. We pray for Elizabeth, Hilda, Susan, Irene, Mike, Ariel, Nelson, Bonnie, William, Linda. Stephanie, Bob, and all those we now name aloud are in our hearts. <clears throat> Sister Donna, Hear us, O God. You lead us home, O God. We give you thanks for all those who have died, now citizens with the saints. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. We lift these and all of our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.